welcome to another exciting edition of Poet the Poet. I'm Robert Dunn. I'm the host of this taffy pull. And as you can see, we cover the world. We cover the waterfront. Um, that's enough of that. Uh, speaking of waterfronts, um, I'd like to introduce my co-host for today. This is Tom Honks. Uh, he makes movies and other things. This is as close as we're going to come to You Bet Your Life with the duck coming down and all that. We have a goose. Um, and you're about to be goosed yourselves in a nice way, I mean, <laughs> because we have two marvelous artists in the personage of uh, Vivine, Vivina Cioli and Robert McDonald. And Vivina is our poet today, and uh, Robert is a classical guitarist. That's the other Robert, not me. But um, I never picked up a guitar in my life. Anyway, we're going to get right to uh, Vivina here. And uh, let's see, you write poetry? Essays and short stories. You spend more time in art colonies than is good for you. I <laughs> uh, hear uh, the Virginia Center for the Creative Arts, the Ragdale Foundation, where you learn to play rags. <laughs> and, and other uh, things. And other things. <laughs> and Villa Montalvo, um, which is a restaurant I hated in once, by the way. And she's been all over the place. She's been in Poets On, The Long Island Quarterly, Sister Song, Negative Capability. You're part of the Fresh Meadows Poets, I believe. Yes. Which is, what, if, what are the Fresh Meadows Poets, for those of us who are out of area? A group of people who meet regularly in Queens mm -hmm. to uh, workshop their poetry and to plan poetry reading events, uh -huh. to spread the word. And, and, <laughs> and whipsaw the public. <laughs> How about a poem, Davina? Ah, thank you. Uh, the first poem I'd like to read uh, was written after studying the environment for a week, and uh, I think our co-host will love it. Ah, yeah. It's called Damselfly. This far from waves of tall grass, where earlier a scarlet tanager froze and showed me his red breeding plumage before lifting for flight. This far from loose drooping clusters of bittersweet nightshade, where violet star-shaped blossoms surround one yellow eye. This far from her duckweed-sheeted pond, a damselfly is dying. Her sheer lace wings, black-tipped and veined like stained glass, flick but do not lift her. Her head, sculptured ancient armor, does not recall how to fly like some free spirit and mate in air. Here, as her last strength unwinds, releasing energy up through her body, her ovipositor taps out a golden cluster of miniature ovals. These last deliberate eggs, away from water, will not hatch nymphs to split their skins and begin again. Each time her injured body pulses, she exposes everything I need to know about the urgency of instinct. Here, having come this far in lonely darkness, she finishes what she was born for. Mm. How did you happen to meet this damselfly? Mm. I was um, in Greenwich, Connecticut at the mm. Audubon Society uh -huh. studying the environment for a week mm -hmm. and uh, our guide found a damselfly and we watched it uh, a dying apply actually. Applying for membership, no doubt. <laughs> uh, all right, so it was a damsel in distress fly then? <laughs> a damsel in distress mm -hmm. fly. Oh, that's how do you choose a, you've, you've gone to these retreats and colonies and whatnot, how do you choose one? Basically, what, you, what look do do through, you? you look through catalogs, you mm -hmm. pick some you think you might enjoy living at while you do your work. Mm -hmm. you, apply, you apply by filling out applications and sending manuscripts, and if you're lucky, you get selected to spend time there. They give you um, unbroken time for introspection and writing. Mm -hmm. You can focus on your work. Do they grade your postcards home? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. How about another poem, which we won't grade either? Okay. <laughs> this poem was written um, to celebrate women for Women's History Month. It's called For the Lost Women, the women who call to me laughing, whose window eyes shatter, whose blossom mouths never bloom, whose bosoms shelve volumes. The women whose body landscapes are parched moons, who carry children and cancer, whose fingers and armpits and hearts bleed a stigmata without end. The women who take long walks in one direction, who do not know love, who are daughters of ash and mothers of volcanoes, 
who brew coffee and drink wine, who let their nostrils fill with bitter herbs, who are consumed by fire, not easily quenched, the women who bargain. These women, these dark nights, have dry throats. They have given birth, yet remain nameless as uncharted stars. They have lived with death in the palms of their hands and need a sip of water. These women look back with keen sight and see their own faces. These women find a grain of sand and use it as crystal ball, as birth canal. So even their granddaughters, who do not know them, even their granddaughters will believe. Mm -hmm. What set you going when you sat down to write a poem? Usually uh, it's an incredible visual experience or emotional feeling, which at first I have absolutely no words for, but it's locked inside. And then a while later, perhaps, there's a lot of free writing that happens, and out of the free writing, a poem starts to develop. And uh, many editions later, sometimes 25 and 30 revisions of oh. poem happen. Well, as Tom Honks here was telling me the same <laughs> thing before the show, uh, you also mentioned that great poems are never written, they're obviously rewritten. How about another great poem? Uh, this poem is about another insect, or is it? It's called Insectology. <laughs> Beetles are insects with biting mouth parts and four wings. The beetle I tell you about is like a small mountain, red, polished roundness, a new Volkswagen. Parked at the curb, without mouth, without wings, without gas, we had no money for gas. It was such a shiny temptation, like the red apple in the very beginning, that someone, I'll never know who, came and bit it, bit it right off the curb. Oh, do apples really apply to the study <laughs> of insects? <laughs> now, speaking of which, um, I notice you have a chapbook, and uh, yes. a poet never goes anywhere without their chapbook because that, otherwise they'll feel undressed and uncomfortable <laughs> and all that. Tell us about that one. Oh. Well, this chapbook called Bitter Larder, uh -huh. um, was originally a short manuscript which sub was submitted to a competition mm -hmm. and uh, I was delighted that it won the competition uh -huh. and as a result it was published and I received 50 copies. I see. And uh, it makes me very happy to have it. Mm -hmm. What <laughs> triggered this one off? Was what? your larder that bitter? <laughs> Um, Were you reading Ring Larder at the I time? I tried to go through my manuscript and select poems that worked together and that had been previously published for the most part, mm -hmm. and um, it was selected. In your opinion, how does a poet truly know that they're truly ready to do a chapbook? I think there's a lot of work that has to go on before one has a publication. Initially, people feel they can start out and uh, immediately they will have this kind of recognition. But a lot of hard work goes into writing poetry, and it isn't until you have an, a lot of experience, um, a lot of publications, and maybe a lot of readings that you start to put together something that may win a competition. Uh -huh. So don't be in such a hurry, then. Don't be in such a hurry. <laughs> uh, well, I think we're in a hurry for another poem. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This one is called Photograph. In this one, I am four months old, and in my father's arms, my eyes are wide for the Easter chick he cups in his outstretched hand. My father's head is bent to notice my notice of the fluffy bird. His glasses do not frighten me, his hair is red, and already beginning to thin. My bonnet, without a brim, is tied beneath my chin. We are in black and white, no, shades of gray. The photo's scalloped edges frame all three, my father, an Easter chick, and me. Tom here is getting very nostalgic, <laughs> that, that reference to an Easter chick. I understand you also occasionally write a children's poem. I do. As, um, a, as a former child. <laughs> as a former child. Right. Um, 
I've been trying lately to do some poems that would appeal to children or might even become children's books. Would you uh, like to hear one? Why not? I might even become <laughs> a child again. That's a How about squiggle, wiggle, stretch? Sometimes before the sun has set, sometimes before my dad comes home, mom says it's time to sleep. I pack my books for school next day. I wash my face and brush my teeth because it's time to sleep. My favorite sleeper is bright red. My favorite bear is Paddington. We know it's time to sleep. In bed, I squiggle, wiggle, stretch. In bed, I snuggle, settle down, close eyes. It's time to sleep. Dad's home. His key is in the door. Dad's home. He kisses me goodnight, and now it's time to sleep. Sweet dreams, says mom, and tucks me in. Sweet dreams, says dad. Good night, sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. For sure, I'll fall asleep. For sure, I'll fall asleep. And the title of that was? Squiggle, wiggle, stretch. You know, it occurs to me that's probably what happens to your strings, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, OK. And one more quick little poem to wrap up. OK, I'll read. Um, Another children's poem. Mm -hmm. As fast as my feet would go. What good is a new two-wheeler when you just can't seem to ride? What good is a sleek two-wheeler when you fall from side to side? I remember my new two-wheeler. It was black with golden stripes. I remember my first two-wheeler. Its streamers, reflectors, and lights. To ride my new two-wheeler, I sat on its small hard seat. To ride my shiny two-wheeler, I pedaled as fast as my feet would go, but I fell. So Dad held tight my two-wheeler, ran quickly right alongside. Yes, Dad held firm my two-wheeler. Together we'd speed and glide. Once Dad ran beside my two-wheeler, I heard him clapping his hands. Once Dad ran alongside my two-wheeler, he let go and was clapping his hands. I was riding my new two-wheeler. I smiled and filled with pride. What good is a new two-wheeler? So good when you learn to ride. <laughs> and kids, you can try riding this kind of stuff at home. <laughs> it's okay with Davina, it's okay with me, it's okay with Robert over there. And we'll be back in a moment with Robert uh, McDonald, but we want to thank uh, Vivina Cioli for coming on Poet the Poet. Thank and you. Stay with us. <laughs> 